Yeah, so the annoying answer to what we found interesting here is everything, because we are we see ourselves as being in the center of the financial services ecosystem, the fintech ecosystem, because we help orchestrate a lot of different use cases within the environment. Anything from financial wellness, digital engagement, all the way through to even anti-money laundering, where we have applications of what we do. So we're a data-first organization, but we lead with insights and spe specialized use cases. Um, but one thing that we've seen rise in popularity a lot um, is the talk around the bankers about ESG and sustainability. In fact, just a few rows behind where we are right now, Money 2020 has released a new uh, ESG stage that's focused solely for ESG and sustainability, which is in line with what we've been seeing by talking to our customers, which is why we offer carbon-related and sustainability-related solutions as well. So today, um, we have two products which we blend quite well in together. Um, so one, I just mentioned uh, our sustainability solution, which is Carbon Insight. That's one of our most successful products which we have out there, and it's live with four customers right now. Um, and that product itself um, is focused on carbon tracking, but not just about coming to a number and coming to like a carbon estimate. It's about building a carbon experience and driving change and behavior to really help, help the environment to, uh, to overcome some of the, the disasters which we've, which we've done to it. So that's uh, the carbon side. But a new product which we released this year is around Insights. So it's a platform for banks to create, manage, and deliver hyper-personalized information through digital channels, so it augments the digital channel of the bank and amplifies the, the end user experience. So on the back here, you can see, for instance, we have some insights which are running from our insight library, um, and they are based, again, as I said, off of transaction data. Um, so as I mentioned with Carbon Insight, I think the first and foremost, the most important thing for us to do is get to an answer very quickly. So we want the user not to have to input any kind of manual information or go through a very rigorous process where there's a lot of friction. We want the user to become comfortable with understanding what a CO2 footprint means. And only then can we raise awareness through the masses. And once we've achieved that and we've contextualized and put it into uh, a framed it for, for customers, we then encourage them with good, with good behavioral tips on how they can change that. And then lastly, we top it off with kind of ways which you can counteract your impact on the environment, whether that's via offsetting or sustainable investments. So when we talk to banks, obviously, as you all very well know, banks have to justify any kind of investment which they, which they make. So yes, it needs to be beneficial for the customer and for the environment, but something like carbon, you can actually build a business case around it as well. And the benefits there tend to be things like increasing uh, customer retention through a more engaged customer, um, actually acquiring new customers because there's a lot of the population, particularly in Western Europe, which are uh, becoming more and more carbon conscious, so they want to be using more sustainable friendly solutions. Um, and then lastly, banks can encourage uptake of their sustainable investment products or green loans or any kind of solar panel loans, things like this, which, which we've seen banks do a lot. So there's, there's revenue to be made in terms of sales of existing products, new customer acquisition and customer retention. And through our customers, what we've seen actually is that uptake has been excellent. You know, we've had one bank which saw 50% opt-in um, from their bank population. So it, it really shows that people, people care about this and it, and it works. Our strategy when it comes to green banking is it's still very new within this space. So we want to stay close to the banks and listen up and hear about what are the specific products which banks want to offer to their customers. And where we come into play is we can then trigger that amount, to sorry, those offers or those promotions to go out to the right customers at the right time and in the right context. So this is a perfect example of the intersection of the two products which I mentioned here, because one which is around carbon, so having the right context to encourage sustainability green, uh, green products, but then you need to have the tools to be able to make the most impact so it goes to the right people. So that's where something like Insight Factory uh, or Insights, hyper-personalized Insights comes to play, because you can target the right kind of customers but we rely on the banks to tell us what are those products that are most relevant and you know, who in, within your customer population is that most applicable to. Beyond what I discussed today, I've, I obviously mentioned uh, insights, hyper-personalization, and carbon. These are obviously big areas of growth for us. But one thing that we're, we're, we're doing, and I can tease it a bit because it's not fully public yet, but we're going further upstream in the value chain, going to the point of where the data 
comes in to us originally. So we are working with open banking aggregators to take that information and enrich it and make it useful for insight. So transaction data, there's, I guess it's, it's arguable, but a lot of people agree that it's one of the richest data sets that you can have on somebody because it tells you a lot about their behaviors and their habits. But just imagine you bank with, everybody banks with more than one bank. So to get a full picture of somebody, you should get, you should, we can leverage open banking data to build a 360 degree view of a customer. And that's something which we're really excited about, which we're going to be working with, with as I said, aggregators on. And there's more news on that, which I'm sure you'll hear uh, in the near future. Personalization is key to driving engagement within mobile apps. And it's not just within banking, it's within any industry. But with banks, you have the advantage of having transaction data, which, as I said, is, is super valuable in driving insights on a customer. But what that does is it fulfills a very basic function, which is build trust and intimacy with the customer, because the customer feels like the bank that, that they are speaking to or that they work with really knows them very well. So one interesting statistic that I have is actually 90% of the banks that we speak to say that they offer personalized services already, but when we speak to customers, 70% of them say that they, forget, they feel like they are being treated like numbers. So obviously there is something not quite going right within the industry where banks feel like they are providing personalized information, but customers don't feel the end of that. So that's why I think personalization is really important in, in driving connections and building relationships, trust. And once you have that platform, then you can use that to improve like your digital sales conversions so that banks can enhance their, their outcomes in terms of, uh, of sales.